It doesn't get more British than a cup of tea. We're a nation of tea lovers, drinking 60 billion brews every year. And one of the nation's favourites is Yorkshire tea. They make nine billion tea bags a year in their factory in Harrogate. The history of Yorkshire tea goes back to uh, 1886. We're still a family business based in Yorkshire. The great joy of, of why we're successful is we, we blend many teas from around the world to make what we believe to be the best cup of tea. Yeah, it's interesting when you tell people it's made in Yorkshire, there's, there's some really extreme views that they, they can't believe tea's grown in Yorkshire, and obviously it's not. Because as beautiful as Yorkshire is, the weather lends itself to drinking tea, not growing it. So Yorkshire tea is actually a blend of varieties sourced from estates in India, Kenya, and this one in Rwanda. Every type of tea comes from varieties of the Camellia sinensis, or tea plant. The tea leaves are hand-picked before being dried and shipped around the world. It's never changed since the 1970s. It is still the cup of tea that we made then. It's the quality of the product. We don't compromise. We ultimately want to make a brilliant brew. The first step is to choose which tea leaves to buy, and that means it's time to put the kettle on. Every day, hundreds of tea samples arrive in Harrogate from suppliers around the world, and it's up to a team of tea buyers to taste each one. I enjoy tasting tea. I know I taste hundreds of cups a day, uh, but I still miss it when I'm on holiday. <laughs> they choose the perfect combination to blend, to get the signature Yorkshire tea taste. To be able to taste tea, you need to be able to train your palate. So it takes quite a few years to understand the complexities of tea, the origins of tea, the seasonality of tea, the, the good in tea, the bad in tea. Today, the team are putting together their finest blend, Yorkshire Gold. Yorkshire Gold is a blend of the top 10 tea estates uh, in the world of three origins that we've picked. Assam in India, uh, Rwanda, which is uh, rich volcanic soils, and uh, Kenyan teas, again, very high altitude teas. The best tea estates feature just the right combination of sunlight, humidity, and well-drained soil, which is why tea is often grown on hills at high altitude. The buyers taste hundreds of samples a day, but Tony and the team don't make their own tea. For that, they call in the professionals. Action. Hugh, Mo, and Adrian. I can't yet. We've got to time it for five and a half minutes, so the won't taste right. Right, we've got them. OK. Uh, Adrian's just preparing the tea. We've made some teas for you to taste. They've got to be timed for five and a half minutes. And when that timer's up, there's another procedure which has got to be very precise. So we'll show you in five and a half minutes, OK? Mo and Adrian are professional brewer-uppers. They prepare the samples for the tea tasters. And Mo has made over a million cups of tea over her 19-year career. Everything's got to be so precise because the tea buyers will know if the teas have been underweighed, overweighed, the milk's not right, and we'll have to start all over again. They're very particular, and that's our job to make sure what goes into Yorkshire tea is the best. Mo and Adrian stew each 5.6 gram sample for exactly five and a half minutes in fresh, boiling hot water, which is key for a proper cuppa. Right, it's going to milk the teas, and then they're all ready for you to taste, Tony. Brilliant. Well, we taste tea at double strength, and that's what you need as a tea taster. That's when you can pick out the attributes of tea. Tea made, it's time to taste. When you're tasting tea, you, you're taking a big slurp, and that's to ensure that you're spraying all your taste buds, and uh, that's when you can pick out the flavours in tea that you're looking for. Very bright, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> very consistent, the quality. Yeah, very brisk, very yeah. bright. Yeah, we talk in a different language. If people are listening in, they think, you know, we were just making words up. But, you know, you talk in the tea language, so, you know, you talk about briskness and, you know, uh, maltiness, and you talk about leggy leaf and loose leaf, and, you know, uh, <laughs> that's how geeky you can get. Brisk flavours tend to be strong and bitter, whereas malty flavours are often thick and earthy. 
And after two decades of making what must be the world's biggest tea round, Moe's getting ready to take it easy. I've worked here for 19 years and I'm retiring in four weeks' time. It's time to put my feet up with a nice cup of Yorkshire tea at the end of the day, isn't it? Yes, I will be sad, but it'll carry on, I'm sure. Once Tony and the tasting team decide what varieties to combine, the orders are placed with tea estates around the world. It can take up to eight months for the tea they've selected to arrive downstairs and packaged into tea bags. 24 tonnes of tea are delivered four times a day. Each pallet contains the right proportions of each tea variety, following the recipes set out by the tea tasters months earlier. And it's up to shift supervisor Rafal to get it blended into bags and back out the door in a matter of hours. Hairnets at the ready, everyone. Today, we are looking out at the production of the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Gold. So it contains the, uh, the teas from three uh, top of origin, so from Assam, Kenya and Rwanda. It is basically a top one ton mix, so roughly you've got about 320,000 of, of tea bags on this pallet. Out of Warsaw, by way of Wakefield, Rafael has been converted to British tea. Originally, I come from Poland. We do drink a lot of tea as well, uh, and it's usually a black tea. Uh, the, the major, major difference between, obviously, Poland and England is the addition of the milk to the tea. Uh, I have to admit, I've tried several times. It's not my cuppa. There's a few theories as to why we add milk to tea. Some say it was to reduce the tea's bitterness or to stop the black tea staining one's finest china. Whatever the reason, 98% of Brits do it. Back on the factory floor, the pre-weighed bags are being unpacked and loaded into the production line, ready for mixing. This is a sitting station where Sean slips every single bag and, and put the tea into our system. And the tea is being sucked through uh, a bucket elevator onto a conveyor. So that, that puts it the tea into one of the three mixing drums. The drums gently turn the loose tea, combining the different varieties. It takes about 12 turns to nicely mi mix the components over, but not over mix them. So, so you still got that, that, that niceness coming out of the blend. These machines are about eight years old. Uh, we are in the process of uh, upgrading our, our blending system. However, uh, obviously we want to keep our heritage, so we're going to try to maintain them and, uh, and keep them. The three drums each take 14 minutes to mix a tonne of tea, and 100 tonnes of tea are blended every day. Once the 12 turns are finished, we need to decount the tea from the mixing drum into our, uh, our toad bin. And you can see slightly uh, those funnels vibrating, that's tea coming down into a toad bin. And it usually takes about 500 kilo each. And from here, it will be ready for production. Each of the lines are uh, named after a Yorkshire River, so we can see wolf, swale, or neat. The tea uh, is being sucked uh, using the uh, suction unit through the roof into a, a tea bag machine uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the factory floor. This is actually where the tea bags are produced. Behind me, you've got one of the uh, tea bag machines. Each of them uh, runs about 2,000 tea bags per minute. So overall, uh, for the, whole, for the whole year, this site is capable of producing over 9 billion of tea bags. Yep, you heard him right, 9 billion tea bags a year. We've seen the, the tea coming into a factory. To turn this into a tea bag, it's roughly between two to four hours, and the product is ready to be dispatched. What you see behind me is the a tea bag machine. A rotating drum doses 3.1 grams of tea onto a sheet of perforated paper three kilometres long. The tea is then sandwiched between a top sheet and crimped together, sealing the tea inside before they're sliced into pairs. 
The next step is to get the 34,000 bags made every minute into boxes. It's a very interesting machine in terms of a lot of happening. So, uh, obviously, this machine has to form a box on its own. So we've got the flat packaging being laid out on the machine, glue spot being applied on the cardboard, then it's preformed, and it's awaiting for the product who comes in. It takes just 2.4 seconds to assemble and pack a box of 80 bags. Once the tea bag is inside, the box is being uh, nicely closed and uh, it's following the process. Uh, each, of the pro uh, each of the boxes will be uh, lasered so customers know the product is fresh. Before being sealed up, the boxes are weighed and passed through a metal detector. Well, we wouldn't want any nasty surprises ruining tea time, would we? This is one of our uh, final critical control points. Uh, so every half an hour, we pass three uh, samples of ferrous, non-ferrous and stainless steel uh, just to making sure that metal detector is working. Between the sacks of tea arriving at the factory and being shipped out as bags, the tea is tasted a minimum of seven times. What's important is for us to make sure that the top quality of the products is getting to our customers. Whenever I go, and if I try a different tea, I definitely can sense the difference with my parents and, and friends. Once they get this first cup, they don't want anything else. Ah, lovely.